But this trust, it turns out there is a magic money tree. Well, that's not true. Uh, where, where, where is the money it's come from? It's because we have careful stewardship of the economy. Yeah, but where does it's the because, money come from? Well, the money was provided for in the budget that we announced last year. So the Chancellor oh. was very clear in the budget that if there were productivity improvements within the NHS, because of the special circumstances the NHS is mm. facing, we would be able to look at pay rises. Well, let's just look at this in some detail then, because in the budget in November, uh, health spending was increased for this financial year by £3 billion, just shy of £3 mm. billion. Does that include the pay rise? No. The pay rise is in addition to that. So it wasn't decided in December. We put the money aside. The Chancellor was very clear that additional money would be made available if we could do a deal with the unions that would include productivity improvements. And that's very important because we want to see better outcomes for patients whilst we also want to see NHS staff properly rewarded. So he was very clear that any money that was part of that deal would be additional, and he said that in the budget. So just to clarify, the three billion increase plan for this financial year and the two billion increase plan for the next financial year does not include the pay rise? That's correct. So I ask again, where will this money come from? We have put money aside. From where? As part of the overall budget. It's factored into our plans to deal with this pay rise. And we've been very specific. But where, where is that? The... Because I've got the departmental resource budgets here. So where it's in this table the... did you put it, it aside? It is not in the NHS budget. No, this isn't the NHS budget. This is the resource planning for all departments. So where did you put this aside? Well, the money is not in the Department of Health budget. No, I bet that, that, said, this is all the budgets. Where is it said, then? said, Andrew, is that there would be extra money forthcoming from the Treasury if we were able to do a deal to reform the way that the pay works within the NHS. Because at the moment, there are automatic pay increments. Mm. It's a very complicated system. It mm. doesn't work for nurses or other NHS staff. It doesn't work for the employers sure. either. So we want to reform that. We are on the way to getting that really positive reform so that we can make sure but, that people are paid well. So are these pay rises conditional on but the we product? We were well aware of that. Are they the budget, conditional? Well, they may, may have been, but I can't find it in the figures. Mm. Uh, are, are these pay rises conditional on productivity improvements? They are part of an overall deal, which includes productivity improvements. But are they conditional? If the productivity improvements are not improved, do the pay, pay don't happen? Do the pay rises not happen? Well, all of this is going to be outlined later today, but essentially changes in the contractual terms are part of the deal, and that will help improve productivity. So that's but, the way it works. But if you don't get it, do the pay rises still take place? I mean, I used to be an industrial correspondent. I've lived through more productivity agreements than you've had hot breakfast. I've never seen one yet that worked that actually paid for itself. So I ask again, if this costs four billion, if you don't get four billion of productivity savings, do the pay rises happen? The pay rises will happen Regardless. in line with this deal, provided it's signed off. And it's the well, reform of the increments in the contract, which you'll know mm. as being a... It's the reform of those increments sure. that but is the I, thing we're agreeing. But let me try one more time. Are these pay rises of 6.6% over three years, are they conditional on these improvements happening or do they happen anyway? They're part of a deal on increment reform. So they're agreed at the same time, Andrew. There isn't some subsequent right. year where we will be clawing money back. That's not the way it's working. Right. It's an exchange for those contractual changes which benefit both the people working in the NHS okay. and the employers and the patients. So that's, the, that's the deal. This has shot your fox, hasn't it? Um, well, we're Even very, the unions we're very, seem pretty happy about well, it. We're very pleased if the government is listening. I must say, in terms of whether this deal is going to be good for nurses, I've had a it number of them already saying to me that they don't feel that cutting some of their annual leave is really going to be happening. That is not going to happen. I mean, well, I hope and it won't. be clear, okay, there is I no hope it cut won't. in annual leave. Right, OK, that's great, Liz. I'm going to look at the deal very, very closely when mm -hmm. it comes in front of us later on today. What frustrates me is we've had a very, very long period when government hasn't made the change here. Labour's been saying for months, we can pay for this 
by reversing some of those tax cuts that the government decided to impose for the very best of people and for profitable corporations. We spelled that out a long time ago, right. how we could have paid for this. And in the meantime, they've lost so many staff from the NHS, experienced staff, who are fed up with their pay, not but, keeping pace for the cost of but living. But would you want a bigger pay rise or is, does this 6.6 .6 seem... Fair enough. Well, what we've said is that it's got to keep track with inflation. And um, that means that actually, you know, if that 6% isn't keeping track with inflation, then you're going to have a problem for nurses right. further down the but line. Do you want more we or are you happy with roughly the broad approach to pay of the government now? Um, we hope that that approach has been informed by discussions between them and the pay review bodies. And if that's what the pay review bodies are suggesting is necessary for retention and recruitment, then that seems sensible. Okay. It's disappointing it's taken them so long to get of here. Of course, the health service is still going to be under huge pressure. And these rises that I've talked about, even if they don't include pay, are still historically low percentage rises in NHS spending. Lower than Mrs Thatcher in the 80s, lower than John Major, way lower than Mr Blair and Mr Brown. Uh, so there's talk that there'll still have to be more money, not necessarily for pay, but for the NHS care services itself. You up for an extra penny on national insurance? No. Uh, we're, we're not looking at that proposal that has been floated in the paper. What we are doing is we are talking about how we can get better value for money. And of course, we've got a spending review next year where we'll look across government spending as a whole. So it would not be the overall strategy of the government to look at extra taxes to find extra money for the NHS? Well, obviously, I can't you know, say what's going to happen at future... No, you, you're pretty future, categorical in ruling out national insurance rises. fiscal events. But what I can say is that we, have, we are spending above the European average on health. We are getting are we? better when value did that happen? for money. We are getting better value for when, money. When did, the, when did we start spending above the European average? Well, we've good? been doing that for some years. Actually, I don't think on OECD figures we have at if all. If you include health and social care, we are ah. across the board. Well, that's because they count social care differently in other ways. On health itself, we spend percentage of GDP less than Germany, less than France, less than Sweden, less than Norway, less than Holland, less than Belgium. Would you like me to go on? Well, the Nuffield Trust recently did a report which showed that we are spending in line on our health service and social care. Well, if the Nuffield Trust says that countries. on health, the Nuffield Trust, I would tell you, is wrong. We do, Andrew, uh, we do recognise we, we there, are less. Issues, there are issues within our but health you, service. My question was, do you rule out tax rises to make up that gap, to bring us up I to the European I am not talking average? about what is going to be in future budgets, of course, we can't do that. Would you but what I'm up? saying is we are spending right. in line with other European countries. Right, and I'm questioning that quite seriously. Uh, would you be up for what Gordon Brown did a while back, another penny on national insurance? Uh, well, we actually want to see an approach that's progressive to this. So we set out the last election, and we, we stick by those plans, that we should be reversing some of the tax cuts for the very best of people and for profitable corporations. As you know, in our manifesto, we said we've got 48.6 billion of spending commitments. Here's 48.6 billion of tax cuts, largely, that we would have reversed. So we are quite explicit about that. Yeah, but that's not all for the NHS. Um, no, it's not. It's for the whole range of public services, including social care, incidentally, where we've got a huge crisis. And I think we've got to recognise where we are. We've had the worst winter crisis, certainly in my memory, I think for a very, very long time. The problem is that if it. you concentrate your tax rises only on the very highest pay people who already account for by far the biggest chunk of income tax, you can't be sure you'd get that money, can by you? By far the biggest chunk of income tax. Yes. But we've seen, A, that, uh, the, the, the rate of income tax, the very best off earners, going down under this well, government. We've seen lots and lots of other well, changes too, well, and the, changes the, the in corporation tax. The top 1% tax. of income uh, tax payers account for almost 30% of income tax. Yeah, they do, Andrew, uh, but you know... How much more would you like? But you know that part of the reason why they have that huge share is because their incomes are so high now. That's a reflection no, but my of inequality. point is that you cannot be sure, unlike a penny on national insurance, which is pretty much a slam dunk, dunk five billion it raises you, mm -hmm. you cannot be sure if you start to raise taxes 
on people who are mobile and internationally employable that you'll get the money. I'm not saying you but, won't, but you can't okay, be sure. But, Andrew, what I would ask is, when we had those levels previously, I'm not talking about 30 years ago, I'm talking about under the previous Labour governments, you know, when we didn't have those cuts to the top rate, for example, did we see huge droves of people saying, this is terrible, I'm getting squeezed too much, I'm moving to other oh. countries? No. Oh. They accepted that was the tax system. And this we, government's we moved were away from a that. Huge deficit, we've not all which been... we've had to sort out. No, no, no. Right. You've made it we bigger because you've cut taxes. Because we've kept it's taxes ridiculous. low, that we're now seeing the lowest the deficit. Well, hold on. You said you've kept. Hold on. I'm going to move on. But you said you've kept taxes low. You, as Chief Secretary, will know that as a percentage of GDP, taxes are already at their highest for 40 years. Well, we've reduced so taxes real. for basic income taxpayers. Not as a percentage taxpayer. of GDP. We've reduced them okay. by a thousand pounds, but that's why we're getting the money in, All right. and that's why the economy is doing better. We need to we move on. Kept 